Thank you very much. In 2002, my wife and I had traveled to Copenhagen to see an ophthalmologist, which is an eye doctor. And after I'd been through half a day of examinations, we were sitting in the doctor's office and I remember expecting to finally hear how they would solve my vision problems. But the doctor looked at me with a sad facial expression that you don't want to see from a doctor. And he said, Morten, you have a genetic eye disorder called retinitis pigmentosa, and it will make you go blind, and there is no cure. Today, I am legally blind. I see the world through a small tunnel. Now, if you try and stretch your arm in front of you like this, and then make a fist, and then look at your fist, then the area of your fist in front of you equals a visual field of approximately 10 degrees. So imagine that you can only see through the inside area of your fist. I have a visual field of 4 degrees, so when I want to see something, I have to scan the surroundings and then create the image in my mind. Now, where I'm blind, it's not black. It's, um, it's more like flickering bright lights. And um, when I'm in a crowd like this, I you know, uh, involuntarily ignore so many of you, so, so uh, sorry for that. <laughs> It's kind of an advantage because I never get nervous, not that much at least, <laughs> because I only see a couple of people in the audience. When I drop something on the floor, I can't find it again. And this tunnel will become smaller and smaller, and one day I, would, I will probably be blind. Back in 2002, I just wanted to ignore this. I, I couldn't accept that one day I would become blind. There were so many things that I wanted to do in life, and, and what about my career and what about my wife? Should I have kids? What father and husband would I even become? No, I just wanted to deny this. So, so life continued as if nothing had happened. My wife and I got two lovely sons and I continued working as a, as a senior art director at the Lego Group uh, despite of the prognosis. Through the years, I slowly lost more and more sight, but I didn't really share this with many because I was concerned and worried about what that would mean for my life and my career. But becoming blind, that wasn't really my biggest problem. Now, through the years, I created this inner voice in my head, and, and in my thoughts, I kept repeating all the things that I couldn't do and, and how dark my future would become. In 2016, I finally collapsed. I couldn't continue any longer. I suffered from stress and depression, and this inner voice of mine had finally convinced me that I couldn't do anything, and I wasn't worth anything because I was becoming blind. And one day, when I was sitting at the, the local job center discussing my future work life and potentially my early retirement plan, something happened. We were sitting around the table and I remember having a deep feeling of hopelessness and powerlessness. Everything that I thought was me was gone. The art director, the father who could drive his sons to karate lessons and to skating halls. I was a person who was desperately holding on to all his old identities and living in the past. But there, in that room, on that cold December day, I finally surrendered. And all my identities seemed to die in <laughs> one big collapse. And it was a relief. I felt that a thousand rocks fell off my shoulders. And, and while people around me were talking about clauses and procedures, their voices slowly faded away. And there, in the silence, I heard a new, very strong voice. What do you want out of life, Morten? This was so powerful. After this experience, I asked myself these questions. 
If I can't change the blindness, can I somehow change my perspective on becoming blind? Can I tell myself a new story about it? Can I become a person who can see possibilities instead of limitations? They were life-changing questions. But I couldn't change. I kept being the old version and I kept repeating all the things that I couldn't do. Now, why is it so difficult to change habits and change thoughts? I started meditating and I started researching ancient philosophy, psychology, biology, physics, history, religions. And the things that I learned just blew my mind. The first life-changing learning was this. We have this subconscious, unconscious mind and it almost works like a computer. It has tons of programs and they run automatically without us even being aware of them. Most of our life we are run by the programs in the subconscious, the autopilot. And most of our lives we are like a jukebox playing the same songs again and again and rarely are we present right here and right now in this very moment, which is the only time that really exists and the only time where we can make conscious decisions that can change our lives for the better. And how do we program this subconscious mind? Through repetition. When we repeat something over and over again, we create habits and they are like programs on the human heart drive. And that leads us to the next life-changing learning. We become what we think and focus on. The Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius said, happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thought. Therefore, guard accordingly. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. The Buddha said, we are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. Most of our thoughts are unconsciously negative. And when we repeat the same limiting thoughts again and again in the mind, we program ourselves with limitations. And that was what I had been doing for so many years. And, and I had become the thoughts that I was constantly thinking. So in the summer of 17, I started an experiment. I wanted to see if I could somehow change the way that I was thinking about becoming blind. And I gave myself four challenges in four months to reprogram my subconscious mind to see possibilities instead of limitations. And my first challenge was stop, swap thought. For 30 days, I would challenge my inner negative thought machine. And, and every time I noticed that my inner voice was complaining or labeling something as bad, I would think, stop, swap thought. And then I would have five seconds to change to a conscious positive thought. Now this is what I call present moment awareness. Observe what is, accept what is, change what is. I could no longer drive my car. I lost that ability in 16 and I now had to go to work by bus. And a trip that normally took half an hour now took one and a half hour. And I hated that bus. I had lost my freedom. And one morning when I was waiting for the bus in the pouring rain, the inner voice started complaining again. Shitty eyes, shitty bus. Always late, shitty waiting in the shitty rain. Oh, stop. <laughs> Swap thought. One, two, three, four, five. I was standing there in the rain with my raincoat pulled all the way up to my neck. And suddenly I remembered that last week my wife had bought this raincoat for me because she felt compassion for me standing there in the pouring rain. Suddenly, I felt an enormous love and gratitude for my wife instead of anger and resentment towards rain and a bus that was late. I realized something else, that I now had an extra one and a half hour, two times every day, to 
listen to audiobooks and to meditate in my huge private limousine. <laughs> I had changed the situation that I had labeled as bad into something that now was bliss, but I didn't really change the situation. I, I only changed my thoughts and my perspective on the situation. I noticed something else, that I could change people around me with my stop-swap-thought game. And when walking into a meeting room one day full of angry colleagues who were frustrated over a rejected campaign, I would think, stop, swap thought. And then I said, well, this is great! <laughs> we love doing campaigns and now we can do it all over again! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> that changed the mood in the room. <laughs> My 30 day stop swap thought game taught me that it's rarely the situation that we are in that is a problem, but our thoughts about the situation. We always have a choice. Whether something is good or bad is simply a matter of perspective. My challenge number two was about challenging fear and worry, and skydiving was on a top five list of things that I had promised never ever to do in my life. But I decided to do it anyway. And I, I wanted to notice how many times the inner voice would try to talk me out of jumping, and it did all the time. But I could use my stop swap thought game to change my thoughts about jumping. And this challenge taught me that things that I fear and worry the most can turn out to be life's greatest moments. My challenge number three was about challenging feeling limited all the time. It, it felt limiting and uncomfortable when people noticed that I was visually impaired. So, so I decided to train feeling comfortable in the uncomfortable. And uh, and lying down on the sidewalk in the middle of rush hour, counting to 30, while the inner voice was screaming, get up, get up, get up, get up! <laughs> that was uncomfortable. <laughs> but this challenge taught me that the only limitations that I will meet in life are those that I think into my life. My challenge number four was about sharing this experience with the world. I became a motivational speaker and I wrote the book Sentenced to Blindness, Now What? Dumped Blind, that's so. To share my journey from hopelessness to, to possibility road so that I would never ever forget this experience. But hey, how can all this change that I'm becoming blind? Well, it can't. But I can decide to change my perspective on becoming blind. I can decide to tell myself a new story about it. Today, my mission in life is to share with people how to change perspective on their life challenges. And I'm doing it through my six steps to possibility road. Wake up, turn off the autopilot, accept what is, notice what you're thinking all day long, change your perspective, and write your new story about yourself. Because life is really like a story, and, and we are the actors in that story. Most people remain actors in their own self-created dramas, but we have the ability to change roles in this play. I decided to become the copywriter and the director of my own story, which is my life. I changed my story from being about the almost blind Lego man who couldn't see the light in life because of a future in darkness. To write the story about the almost blind man who decided to create his life and to be grateful for the huge gift that life is. You know, if we change the story that we keep repeating to ourselves in the mind, we change our lives. Isn't it ironic? I had to lose my sight to get that insight. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.